New video right now shows the moment a Russian cruise missile blew a Ukrainian mall to bits. It was a message to President Biden, who's over in Europe. About a thousand people were inside at the time. A dozen of them died. That number will surely go up. You may not have seen that video today. In fact, Ukraine's sort of fallen away from the top of everyone's minds. That's because, at least today, most of the cable news networks spent the morning celebrating a NATO expansion. The decision to invite Finland and Sweden to become members demonstrate that NATO's door is open. Yeah, kind of open, except for Ukraine. Finland and Sweden is fine, not Ukraine. The country's president isn't happy about this, and he made that clear during an address to NATO today. Here's what he said. The open-door policy of NATO shouldn't resemble the old turnstiles on Kyiv's subway, which stay open but close when you approach until you pay. Hasn't Ukraine paid enough? He said the open-door policy of NATO, uh, well, clearly was closed to his country. Remember, Ukraine wanted to join NATO for years, but France and others did not want to upset Vladimir Putin. Now, Zelensky is burying dead troops back at NATO headquarters. They are popping the champagne. With that, we bring in Congressman Mark Green, former Army Ranger, Special Forces Flight Surgeon, now House Foreign Affairs and Armed Services Committee uh, member. Are we right to celebrate Sweden and Finland joining? Yeah, I think it's a good thing, Leland. You know, it's, it adds to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It adds to their security very clearly and it boxes Russia in. It gives Russia a pretty significant consequence for invading Ukraine. I think it's a good thing. So is President Biden right to take a victory lap in saying that this is a foreign policy success? Well, if you look at it this way, uh, both countries joined NATO because Russia invaded Ukraine. Russia invaded Ukraine because our weak president failed in his withdrawal from Afghanistan. That's when Vladimir Putin decided he could invade. So I guess you could give the credit all to Joe Biden then. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, see I'm seeing the logic. Uh, we obviously have video now up of the Afghanistan withdrawal. It was actually just about a year ago that President Biden announced the end of a U.S. troop presence in Afghanistan. Uh, connect those two dots because we left Afghanistan saying we weren't going to fight. We said for a long time we were never going to fight for Ukraine. Yeah, so our president was basically, uh, we're going to run away regardless of the situation on the ground. The, the Taliban had seized significant portions of the country, uh, despite what we thought would happen. Uh, we, we basically collapsed against the general's advice. The general said, hey, do this out of Bagram. He said no. He overrode the generals and said no, go to 600 troops. Everything that happened there, leaving billions of dollars of equipment to the Taliban, was weakness. And that you know, telegraph that weakness to Vladimir Putin. So Putin said, oh, I can take Ukraine now and they're not going to do anything. Right, you, um, you put, well, hold, hold, in, in fairness, though, we did do a lot. You've come on and you've praised the Biden administration for how much weaponry they've sent to the Ukrainians. And it's been it's been very effective. We did a number of interviews where we both thought Ukraine was going to be overrun right. by the Russians. Thanks to yeah. U.S. help, they weren't. How's that not a success? Yeah, you're getting to step two of the thing. I'm, I'm talking about the reason why Vladimir Putin chose to go into Ukraine. You're, you're talking there about what we did in response to Ukraine. Our, what we did with Afghanistan prompted the invasion of Ukraine, and the invasion of Ukraine is why Sweden and Finland chose to join NATO. Had that not happened, they would not have joined NATO. So, yes, Joe Biden caused those two countries to, to join NATO because he failed in Afghanistan, which compelled uh, Putin to invade Ukraine. Now, in the response to Ukraine, yes, Joe Biden has made some good moves. The, the sanctions, although they were stair-stepped and should have been, um, you know, total at the beginning, uh, the, the, the sanctions were good. That we, we should have done that. We should have sent the weapons, uh, but we should have done it sooner. We voted in Congress in November, and they didn't get to Zelensky's military until a week before the invasion. So uh, while some decisions have been good, others have been bad, but, but the point I was making is Ukraine happened because of Afghanistan. No, and you, pred you predicted back a year ago that there were going to be consequences to this, that Vladimir yeah. Putin was, was watching this. Uh, we fast forward, though, a year, two years, three years from now. Uh, Ukraine is not going to, to join NATO. We, we pretty much know that's not going to happen. 80-plus uh, yeah. percent of the Ukrainian population doesn't want to give up any territory to end the war. Uh, Vladimir Putin certainly is not going to give back Crimea and the eastern part of Ukraine. 
Are we now going to have this low-grade stalemate war that started in 2014, flared in 2022, continue now for years and years and years on NATO's eastern flank that will now include Poland, now include U.S. troops in Poland? So I don't think the war inclu you know, will involve Poland. So if, if, I, if I heard you correctly, I, I don't think that happens. But I think the low-grade war continues because as long as there's a Russian soldier in Ukraine, the Ukrainians are going to fight. And, they, and that means Crimea to them now because they've sent some success early on. Uh, will that uh, change as the, the situation in the Donbas and Donetsk changes? I, I don't know. But, but when I left Zelensky and in all my conversations, they've said we're staying in until every Russian is gone. And Putin will stay in as long as he's alive. So you have those two situations. I don't think the war ends for some time. Well, and that means American treasure, at least, is going over there. So far, not American lives. When I was talking about Poland, U.S. now establishing permanent troops in Poland. With Sweden and Finland joining, you're now going to have a, a lar much larger NATO presence uh, in the Arctic as well, much closer uh, in toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Russians. How doesn't that provoke Vladimir Putin, or should we not care? Well, at this point, this is the consequence of his invasion of Ukraine, and he just has to pay that price, so we don't care. Uh, he should never have invaded a sovereign country next to him. And this is, you know, this is what he gets. The side effect to us, though, is, you know, the competition in the Arctic, look, China is uh, doing everything they can to, uh, you know, invest militarily and economically in the Arctic. And so our presence, this helps us enormously mm. with that competition in the Arctic yeah. with China. Oh, th that, that's a great point in terms of the competition in the Arctic. I had, not, I had not gotten quite there, which is why we have you on. Congressman, it's good to see you. Enjoy your July 4th. We'll, uh, we'll talk in July. Thanks, Leland. Thank you, sir. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.